It is very curious because this is going to lead to G2 playing a composition that they haven't won on yet so far in this split. Because what they've won on yet is, is the Vox Fortress, either Lance or Grace compositions, or the Celeste around Hondor build compositions. <laughs> and they're gonna they're not going to get either. With the CP Idris ban too, that's another really strong late game carry that G2 is not going to be able to play with. They have played the Kestrel Baptiste Catherine in the past and they've won with it too. Now they're going to have... Kestrel and Finn, they could still pick up the the Baptiste last pick, and yeah. it works well, synergizes as well with Finn. I mean, so last, it's possible. Last week we saw Hundo just individually destroying on Kestrel. Some of his mechanical plays, his positioning in the fights was just beautiful to watch. He got multiple of the top five plays last week actually <laughs> on his Kestrel. So excited to see what he's going to be able to do this game. Yeah, it also opens up that possibility for the massive combo of forced accord into an active camo into a quibble. But we're going to get this pedal coming out from mm -hmm. Calamity, making more and more appearances on the fold as more teams decide to go to that well and try out the pedal for themselves. This pedal could be a CP jungle pedal too, just because Aeon is a great pedal player. He's played it so many different times in the past, so it can be a flex depending on what they want to close out the composition with. The Gray's first pick, I want to talk about that for a little bit because Keanu had it last game. He chose not to go for the Echo again, and while it worked the first game because they were ahead, it didn't work last game. So. While Calamity, it's a strong pick for them, they didn't need to deny it from G2 Esports. The Ringo comes out and that's going to be a CP jungle pedal like I was saying. Ringo is going to be the first time we see it this season and it's going to be on Leon nevertheless. Alright, we have a very different composition coming out from G2 to what we're used to seeing here. The Scarf, likely in the jungle, it could be, I guess, Kestrel in the jungle, but it's less likely to see that weapon power go into the jungle. Yeah. What are we expecting to see out of this game? I'm expecting to see a lot of action. There's going to be fights constantly because this pedal is going to want to get ahead yep. early, but so is this Kestrel, and it's just going to be a bloodbath. So many rotations from the lane and just nonstop action is what it should be. Hopefully. Right, I'm, I'm hoping that Calamity Reborn plays really aggressive. Ringo does outmatch Kestrel in the lane and Pedal outmatches Scarf. Play aggressive and get a lead. All right, we'll see if they can bring that one home. It's time to head into game number three. Let us know who you think takes it. Hashtag Vainglory8. But let's pass it back to our casters and jump onto the Halcyon Fold. 1-1 one, one, tied a piece. Calamity Reborn in G2. Winner takes all in this quarterfinal match. Excoundrel Leon pulling out a iconic pick on this Ringo. Going to be very interesting to see if Calamity Reborn can also make this Crystal Power Petal work in the jungle. Yeah, I, I much prefer Crystal Power Petal specifically into this uh, game than I would have done the Weapon Power Petal. Me and you were discussing it, and it's the the ability for Weapon Power Kestrel to just literally fade in a um, fade off in an active camo means it's very difficult when you jump in as a petal to actually find those killing blows, and then you kind of get left in no man's land. And against a Finn and a Scarf, it's not really where you want to be. So I much prefer the pickup of the CP Petal here. They will need to look to push their early game advantage though, because eventually that CP Petal is going to have a tough time against the Scarf. D2 with a very aggressive early rotation. Walk straight into the jungle of Calamity, take away that front Treant, take away the middle uh, Elder Treant, and now they can just move towards their backs here. I like what Calamity do, immediately moving up to the lane, because they know that Hundor and Dark Potato are going to be at the backs. Pushing this wave in, trying to deny farm from Hundor, but Keanu Nakoa will be in position to tank up any minions that do decide to run towards the turret. Yeah, they haven't been able to push it quick enough. Hundor makes his way back into lane here, and he's level two, so he's really pretty happy to just farm from range as that glimmer shot and active camo, so most situations can be dealt with at this early laning phase for Hundor. And we talked about, you know, pretty iconic for just the Beyond on this Ringo. Pretty iconic also to see Hundor on his weapon power Kestrel, something that he's performed so well on in the course of this year, really. Um, so really excited to see him pull that one out because I think I've always seen him as one of the best weapon power Kestrels in Europe. And uh, I think in a game like this, you're definitely going to need to be playing your best. Yeah, certainly one of the most consistent weapon power Kestrels in, in Europe. And I think that consistency is something I value very much from Hundor uh, across the board. In reality, of his uh, his carry picks, you can always expect that Hundor is going to uh, perform to a, a level that that you you need from him, and that G2 can rely on that ability from Hundor to uh, to hold them above water. Right now, it's going to be, I think, a very slow start to this one. G2 will not really be threatened early unless 
somehow Aeon is able to catch out Dark Potato or Hundor on this petal. D2 will be able to scale nicely into the late game, which is where they want to be. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got two incredible late game powerhouses here. A very, very good first tier turret taking machine as well in the form of Scarf and this uh, Kestrel. Hundor takes a critical strike from the Ringo. Ghost is not done yet, though. Ooh, Dark Potato gets knocked up in that Holy Nova. But not enough damage has come out from Calamity to threaten. Hundor does take a lot of damage and forces the Healing Flask uh, out. So Aeon was able to be effective with his quadruple crystal bits. But look at the damage that comes out from this Scarf at range. The Siege, the artillery that G2 have available via Spitfire and Glimmer Shots do provide a lot of threat to Calamity, who are uh, all or nothing almost with the Ringo and Petal, especially if they're diving on in with Ghosts. Benediction. Yeah, G2 actually get a little bit of an advantage in their back pocket by burning two healing flasks from Calamity. So now it's only Leon that has his available. He's pretty low right now, but you know, like we said, they'll always give him the potential to bait people in. That was one of the major reasons that Calamity got a major win, as he just uses it there, so he won't have that bait uh, left. As he again, the turret is a target here for G2. That turret taking machine of Kestra as the engage comes through. Yeah, Nico will get silenced. Hundo's in trouble. Leon just walks up and takes first blood here on that Ringo. Now it's Keanu Nicole being threatened. Is tanky enough to be able to weather the storm, but Calamity Reborn able to turn that one right around. And this is something that I was expecting from Leon on the Ringo. He did it and showed that he could do it on the CP Idris. He, and maybe it was less relevant on the CP Idris because sometimes that's not always the right move. But on the Ringo, this is one of the carries that can literally just enter beast mode. You know, you hit that Twirling Silver, you run in, you take a forward aggressive position and you just run their carry down. And, uh, you know, that's like we said, I was expecting to see Leon be a bit more aggressive in this game because of this pick specifically. He's now picked up that Sorrow Blade as well. So tier three item spike. Hundor's going to be able to pick his up now as well and be able to respond. And with a sliver of health remaining on that turret, it won't be long before you feel like G2 consolidate and head towards this lane and try and shove it in with that superior wave shove that they have. Yeah, it's only going to take a single bit fire or glimmer shot realistically at this point for G2 to finish that turret, which would be an infusion of 600 gold going over to the team, which would put G2 nicely in the lead, would put them up to a, a thousand gold lead at this five minute mark. Do you see Aeon moving closer and closer to his first tier 3 item? The downside of building four crystal bits is that you do limit that gold, but you do have a lot of damage that comes out of it. And look at that, Hundle really struggling against that. Dark player is going to charge up his Dragon's Breath, but it's only Ghost being affected at this point. It might be enough to push Calamity Reborn back so they can take down this turret, though. There's a minion candy on the wave. Aeon aggressive on towards Hundle, trying to reveal him at Aeon. We will look to do so. Dark Potato is in trouble. Fountain able to keep everyone nice and healthy on the side of G2. The Fountain from Ghost also being popped at a similar time. And oh, that's a great shot onto Leon. That forces Calamity into a compromising position. Aeon's trying to find a kill, but he'll just fall down. And now there's no way Calamity can defend this turret, if not save their lives. Yeah, and, and Eon, I think with the right idea, but wrong execution, trying to find that aggressive move onto the weapon power caster, like you said, you really want to keep on her as much as you can to stop her from slipping away in that stealth. And uh, well, Munions, as we know, are a very good tool to stop people slipping away in stealth easily and kept their uh, tabs on Hundor there. But unfortunately, the other problem with Petal is when she commits like that, if the enemy team decides that they're going to turn around and actually start to try and combat you, that low base HP comes into effect and Dark Potato immediately turns down, gets the Spitfire and the Goop going, and that will start to shred through Eon, as you saw. Frostburn is a big pickup, though, I feel. I think if he's going to do that, Frostburn's going to make it more easier for Leon to get into position. And now Leon is level six as well. Even as a weapon power ringer, you have to respect the damage that a Hellfire Brew does. So Hondor's going to have to be very careful in these team fights. I think it, you know, it's shown that there is potential for Calamity Reborn to dive him. Now with the Hellfire Brew as a, as a follow-up, no reflex block there. Hondor, you know, he's uh, he's looking pretty suspect to going down in these team fights. Yeah, no reflex block and no health purchased. Uh, from the, you know, the, the, the reflex block components that Okart can actually do a lot in tanking some of the damage that the Hellfire Brew does at these early levels. A Forced Court finds Leon though, he is just destroyed. Keanu Nakoa strikes true and Hundor to get the kill credit. Yeah, no 
reflex block on Leon. No crucible on Ghost yet, and Leon just caught out by a really well timed force accord from Keanu Nakoa, picking out one of the key members, or if not the key member, of these uh, team fight damage. Well, the team fight damage coming out from Calamity, they're going to be able to capitalize with immense some good mutual objective control, taking the immense payout from the gold mine. They're going to take away as much as they can from that forward side jungle of Calamity as well. Leon looks like he's going a super aggressive build here as well, working towards what I imagine is going to be Tyrant's Monocle, maybe even double Tyrant's Monocle coming out, relying on the Twirling Silver for the attack speed in the mid game. Just looking to shred through these squishy targets. It will be Eon providing the distraction and slowing down, and you think it would, think it would be Leon following up with the immense amount of damage that he'll be able to put out with this particular Ringo build. You see an infusion purchased up for Aeon at this point, so Clan Reborn as an investment of 500 gold that they will be looking to use wisely to find a team fight and get some objectives for themselves. That gold miner taken by G2 puts them in a very comfortable position of a four, uh, almost 4,000 gold lead. In fact, it is straight up 4,000 at nine minutes into this game. This time the Force Accord is dodged out with the Twirling Server, Leo, uh, Leon able to get out of that one nicely. This gives Calamity Reborn that re-engage that they need now to move on into Hundor and Dark Potato. They have to be very careful how they do so. Hundor still very slippery on this uh, weapon power Kestrel with the active camera. You see G2 will move towards the fronts and steal that one away. Again, there is a point in time now where G2 can actually look to exploit the lack of reflex blocks on Eon and Leon and Ghost not having finished up that Crucible and is a little bit away from it. They probably have a good minute right now where they could look to seek another team fight, and that team fight could result in them picking up another gold mine. They could potentially push onto that tier two turret. And uh, I think Keanu is trying to wind up for this. They are targets to try and chase down here. Hundor and Dark Potato have got a lot of burst damage on the table as well. Hundor nearly finishing up his tier three tornado trigger, so keeping himself ever so slightly ahead of Leon in terms of build itemization. Although they are very close at this point in time. Hundor has got a minus CS lead as well as the global gold lead too. And he's also been able to invest in a little bit of armor also. Yeah, certainly. At 20 CS coming up huge as the global objectives also really helping out here. There's that Tornado Trigger finished, and an Infusion as well to match Leon's level 8 Infusion. There is now a Crucible, worth noting that Ghost has picked that one up, which makes this Forced Accord slightly less impactful, but Keanu Koa is not far off upgrading his Quibble into a... Uh, is it his Quibble? It is his Quibble to, uh, to uh, level 5 so that he can stun his opponents here. That's when things get very interesting. Here comes the Hellfire Brew. It's going to land on Hundor. Fortified Health comes out from the Plight Company just to try and tank some of that damage up. Leon taking a lot of damage, and Yanako is standing on top of an active camera trap. A one shot's going to connect onto Ghost to Spitfire onto Leon. G2 not really looking for it full on engaged just yet. Leon still had that healing flask in tow, so we'll get himself back up to a healthy amount of HP. Hundor currently sitting on an infusion. Leon has already procced his infusion, so he's maybe looking to hope to convert that aggressive maneuver into a kill or some sort of advantage for his squad. Hundor holding onto it, though, as he gets that healing tree on again. One of the, I know, the major things that Vainglory wanted to achieve by removing the Halcyon potion is clever use of the healing treons. And uh, Hundor used that as a clever use of the healing tree <laughs> to help himself out of that pit that he'd managed to put himself in with that aggressive maneuver from Leon. That is a, is that a war treads from Keanu there? Yeah, it was used to get them into position. Quibble will stun two and look at Aeon's health, he's dead. Goes to very slow fountain, but the Crucible will block up the Forced Accord. Is gonna be a one single kill going over towards G2 and Hundor popping that infusion for that extra damage, the one shot. 570 into Leon there puts him down to just under 600 health. Now this turret will be sieged very successfully by G2. Nothing that Calamity can do in that scenario. The gold lead is running away for G2, currently up to 7,000 at the 12 minute mark. Yeah, they're playing a very, very calculated and clever game. Not been full of kills, but it has been really, really sort of a showcase of how to capitalize on small advantages and turn them into something greater for your team. Every single major gold advantage that they have managed to claim on the map so far has been the result of a singular pick of some sort. Just one, one kill, and they've managed to get 
gold miners. They've managed to get turrets. They've managed to get, you know, uh, sort of aggressive maneuvers into the sort of forward jungle of Calamity. Every single time they make a pick, they convert it into something. And that is the optimal way to play Vainglory at this level because there isn't going to be huge mistakes all the time that you'll be able to get aces and, and have really easy access to the map. You can see here, this is a four kill game at 13 minutes with a 7k gold lead. The, the, the gold lead certainly hasn't come from the kills, Dalsy, and it's just a masterclass on how to control the map from G2. Yeah, it's something that European teams at the top level of play do so well, is converting small advantages into huge leads for themselves because very typically we don't see those massive three-man team fights being resulting in an ace as teams, once they lose a single member, understand that the team fight will not win and it's very unlikely they can convert that to something else. So they've had to figure out how to get gold otherwise, and it is an objective-based game after all, these MOBAs. Have to kill the Bane Crystal, which means that it's not about kills, it's not first to 15 like Blitz. It is all about that Bane Crystal destruction, and that means that you have to take a gold miner any time that the other team shows hesitance to push up in the lane, then you're going to be getting a significant amount of gold over them. When you start hitting 8,000 gold ahead of your opponent at 14 minutes, think about what 8,000 gold can build you, Excound. Well, that's almost three Shadow Glasses. It's, uh, it's certainly a lot of money, Dalsy. Money in the bank means that Hondor now at his full build with a reflex block in tow. I, I much prefer this type of Kestrel build. It gives you the flexibility of basic attacks by adding in the Tornado Trigger. Sometimes when you play uh, and see Kestrel builds, you see that Tension Bow variant with the Double Tyrant's monocle that is simply all about the initial on hit and obviously then following up with Glimmer Shots. This just means Hundle's a bit more flexible and against the way that Leon likes to play, having the ability to move and attack, a very basic concept in Vainglory, but obviously um, when you play Weapon Power Kestrel with the, the Glimmer Shot focus build, you're there static casting Glimmer Shots, but having the ability oh, to... No. Oh. Leon, is he safe? Manages to walk away, but he's into a Spitfire. One shot won't connect. Somehow, manages to escape that. Yannicka opted to polite company rather than quibble, perhaps that was it. But hey, 15 minutes in the Kraken, she spawned. Yeah, I don't think G2, maybe they will. Maybe they'll just push this at their advantage and go for this very, very quickly. They have got a Kraken taking monster team, by the way. Scarf and Weapon Power Kestrel at full build. I mean, look how quickly, I don't even know if, if uh, Calamity are going to get there in time. No, they're not even contesting it, Excoundrel. They know it's happening. But what can they do about it? Perhaps they can set up for a team fight. Perhaps they can get a turret. Another one of those 600 gold for Kraken moments. And oh dear, Calamity Reborn are in a bit of trouble here. Ghost in the middle of it all. Leon's trying to find Dark Potato. 800 damage done with two auto attacks. A Hellfire Brew will come through and hit Dark Potato, but it gets the block out. So it's not going to do too much damage. And now Calamity Reborn are forced to walk away. G2 will march them down, perhaps. Leon wants the team fight moving in. Oh wow, Ghost gets destroyed. Here comes a Dragon's Breath. It's going to connect with Aeon, and Aeon should go down to Kestrel. Leon now stuck between a rock and a hard place. Kestrel moves in stealth, and that's going to be a lot of damage onto Leon here. He can't escape this. He will just try and buy as much time for his team, but enough time may not mean anything because the Kraken will be taking down this choke point turret as the ace comes through for G2. Yeah, they might not be able to end the game here because the rest of Calamity will respawn and Keanu's going to have to make his way across the entire map, but they're certainly going to get a significant amount of damage done. Leon with 13 seconds to go. Maybe if G2 can make a pick here, especially onto Eon, they might find their opportunity. Eon just dead! Look at that. G2 monsters when they get these late game scaling compositions. 9,000 gold in the lead. And it is going to be Leon looking to take down Dark Potato, trying to save the base. It is going to be a single kill, one apiece for Hundo and Leon. Ghost last man standing. Kraken taking down the Vein Crystal turrets as Hundo will work at them as well. Active camo just to try and escape. It's good prediction by Ghost to know where he's going, but what can he do on this grace now that Keanu Nakoa is here as well? Aeon respawns. He is marching towards Hundor. Maybe he can blow him up, but it doesn't look likely. This is GG for G2. Oh, wonderfully, wonderful game of just really cleverly played Vainglory.
play to your advantages. You knew you had good early turret pressure with this composition, so you played to that. You found picks before the reflex blocks came out. You found a couple of picks with Keanu Nikoa finding those early forced accords. You converted them into global objectives. Those global objectives gave you a massive uh, sort of global gold lead, which allowed you to have that team fight item advantage. A G2 just played a really nice move.